Yo, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys uh, some charging stuff from uh, Tesla. So, um, I'm gonna just roll the tape here first. Uh, the car to the left here is uh, the, the Model S Raven that I borrowed recently from uh, Mega Yule. Remember the white one? Uh, so that one is uh, it has the version G pack, whereas the other one to the right here, that's also a Raven, the Model X, the red one I used for 1000 km challenge. But um, I don't know what revision it is, but it was it was from last year. And uh, they say that the, the version G or the G pack is supposed to be faster and have thicker cabling and thicker whatever harness uh, so it can take 200 kilowatts but unfortunately in Norway we're not able to take it or in Europe because we don't have CCS port uh, natively in the in the model X and X so um, uh, and also I tried the, the CCS adapter and it seems to still be capped at 370 amp which is around 130 140 kilowatts but you see now that um, uh, now the the the, the G-Pack can withstand longer and higher power versus before. I don't know if this is just a software update or something, but it seems like the G-Pack is actually faster. So one thing I noticed during this charging session was that the fans didn't run at all, almost didn't run. It was really quiet and I supercharged a lot with many various cars and S and X, they are supposed to have pretty loud fans. So it could indicate that the G-Pack might have lower internal resistance and Tesla can push higher speed over time compared to before because yeah you guys saw it now when I was talking that um, the before uh, the the Model X or, or I mean the 100 pack could peak at 140 kilowatt but then it dropped also like a rock I will show you soon in a graph but um, uh, also uh, you saw that okay uh, this time uh, the 2020 the G-Pack only peaked at 130 kilowatt but I was able to peak at 140 kilowatt other places but the problem again Nowadays is that, you know, these two uh, cars here, they were charging at the version 2 supercharger, which has no cooling in the cable. Version 3 supercharger has cooling. And I've seen uh, uh, things that it seems like if you charge in the daytime, uh, the, the, the passive cool cable, V2 cable, will overheat and then you start to get speed throttling. And then some smart people in America, they put, oh yeah, <laughs> the, the G-Pack finished now. So the G-Pack was almost 10% faster than the, the, the old pack. But some people, they put a wet cloth on the V2 um, charging plug and then they were able to trick the system into charging faster. But that is a bad idea because why do you think they put a sensor, a temp sensor in the cable in the first place, you know? But okay, so um, anyway, despite all that overheating cable stuff, it's, it still seems like uh, the, the G-Pack now charges faster and it builds up less heat. And I'm going to show you in the graph soon. I'm just going to wait now and see. You see, before it took almost an hour to finish the 90%. But, okay, finish. But I should also mention that most people, they don't charge 90% on long trips because everyone who thinks that, oh, shit, this is slow, they haven't owned a Tesla or an EV before. They think you have to charge 100% or 90%. No, 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 no. I also did that mistake in the beginning. You usually have to charge to about... Uh, 60 70 percent on long trips because uh, many cars they they charge slower towards the end and also many cars they have good range like Tesla so you don't have to charge to 90 percent it takes too long but let me show you some other stuff here and then this one is useful uh, you see the charging power the, the comparison so I in included the e-tron right now so you can see the difference because e-tron is charging really fast to about 70 80 percent and then it even when it throttles it's still faster than the other cars here and i also included eqc because it's similar price car and it's an suv so yeah and you see uh, that um, this one the g-pack if you try to draw the line up here you see that it would probably charge at 200 kilowatt and in america you can get 200 kilowatt because they have a different plug over there at the version 3 or actually the supercharger they use a different plug but in europe we have two types of plugs on the supercharger we have the ccs and then the old uh, type 2 modified type 2 and if you would charge at the modified type 2 then you can plug it in and you would get 140 kilowatt also i also receive 140 kilowatt at some stations with the g-pack but because it's not water cool eventually it will drop the speed will drop similar to this one actually so that's the problem it's not water cool the v2 cable so 
why? Well, maybe we can use V3. So I was also tried that. I went to the V3 because the V3 supercharger has water cooled cable, but there seems to be a limitation in the, the CCS adapter. So in Europe for now, for model S and X, you can't really get any speed that you can get in America unless battery day reveals something. Maybe future S and X will get CCS adapted natively because that will solve the problem. I, yeah, I assume, unless Tesla hasn't unlocked uh, the full potential on the CCS adapter yet. But I'm going to show you the next one here is maybe a more useful comparison because here we look at how much are you getting in kilowatt divided by the efficiency of the car. So the more efficient car, the faster you actually get uh, of charging speed. Because in the end, what matters is not how many kilowatt you are putting in at a given time or how many kilowatt hour you get in total. What matters is how much range you get out of it. So uh, you see that, okay, before it had this weird ramp up and then it slows down uh, quite fast. Uh, but now it has more flat rate, but then e-tron goes faster past a certain point so how is it then i wanted to know also okay e-tron used to be the top top uh like top reference for what you can expect from charging but how is it now then okay i made another comparison here just to see so here we see that um uh, we look at okay how long if you charge for 15 minutes for example how many kilometers of range do you get and you see before e-tron was faster barely faster than uh, than the uh, the, 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 well, the, uh, yeah, the Model X before, but now with the new G-Pack, then the G-Pack is faster because it has a flatter curve and because simply because it's more efficient than e-tron. You could see it's down here, it's kind of slow-ish, but okay, it's not, yeah. And then uh, the, the next table here is also useful because normally if you stop for a given time, you, now we can see how many minutes does it take to reach uh, a certain range. You know? And uh, actually, even though Model uh, X was slightly slower than e-tron practically it was almost not that, that different and we saw this in the 1000 kilometer challenge when I did you know the red Model X and then the next day I did the uh, e-tron or the other day I don't remember but you saw that they were neck on neck <laughs> after 1000 kilometer they were neck on neck it means that now if you try to redo this with with uh, Model X with G-Pack the uh, Model X would be even faster than before because it has a flatter curve. But okay, so um, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for now. So I guess we have to wait for battery day to see what kind of good shit Tesla has for us and for the rest of the car industry. Yeah, so that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.